you couldn't hurt anyone with this thing. I mean, the box says non-lethal laser-like sound effects. In the early 2000s, Chicago-based filmmaker Eric Fensler produced 25 short parodies of the popular 1980s cartoon, G.I. Joe. Iki! What? I'm a computer! Stop all the downloading, help computer! I don't know much about computers other than, other than the one we got in my house. My mom put a couple games on there and I played... <laughs> Joe. With a strong appeal to the nostalgia center in the brains of many internet users, So Bad It's Good Again re-recorded voiceovers, and some bitchin' mustaches, Fensler's G.I. Joe PSAs stand as a monolith of pre-YouTube internet video success. While their exact view counts are lost into the ether as many of us first watched these videos as embedded quick-time movies, it stands to reason that these parodies were the auto-tune the news of yesteryear. But perhaps we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. From where did these G.I. Joe PSAs originate? The year is 1986. The glorious days of Reaganomics and the last chapter of the Cold War. The world sees its first computer virus. Argentina wins the World Cup. There are no Pokemons or Harry Potters, just good old American G.I. Joes. A group of invincible, laser-wielding, patriotic military action heroes fighting against Cobra Commander's terrorist organization, hell-bent on world domination. And their very helpful insight into common situations which might present a dilemma or challenge to youngsters everywhere. Remember, if a fire breaks out in your home, always test the door first. If it's hot, find another exit or yell for help. Now we know. And no one is half the battle. G.I. Joe! It's been suggested that the PSAs were included by Hasbro to fill a quota of educational material. And while they may have been legitimately helpful in the late 80s, flash forward to the early 21st century, and the kitsch value of these segments far outweighs their practical value. Fensler's parodies, which were initially hosted on his own website, and then eventually on Ebombs World, and much later on YouTube, poked fun at the public service announcements by replacing the voices of professional actors with those of Fensler and his friends. Instead of warning of real life dangers, would warn of dangers like pork chop sandwiches. Pork chop sandwiches! Oh sh Get the f out of here! What are you doing? Go! Get the f out of here, you stupid idiot! Fensler's redubbed and in some cases reanimated PSA remixes not only became a huge hit, but also gave internet users some of their first exposure to the use of mainstream media as a starting point for their own remixes. Many imitators would follow suit, some to great success. Unfortunately, there was more than one juggernaut at work here. On September 9, 2004, Fensler received a cease and desist from Hasbro, who said the distribution of his PSAs violated their blah blah blah, blah blah blah, blah 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 blah. This cease and desist, along with the actions taken by Constantine Films regarding the downfall parodies and the Associated Press in response to Shepard Fairey's Hope poster, raise an interesting question. Title 17, Section 107 of the United States Code says that the fair use of a copyrighted work for purposes such as criticism is not an infringement of copyright. The law protects these works because they're valuable. Too bad your ass got sad. Consider our national anthem. Though the lyrics were written by American lawyer and sometimes poet Francis Scott Key, the tune is ye old British drinking song Anacreon in Heaven. The two melodies are exactly the same. And under modern copyright law, King George could have been all cease and then desist and bam. No more national anthem. General Hawk would want you to know that upholding fair use isn't just a responsibility. It's your patriotic duty. And now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Know your meme!